Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we'll be discussing about the evolution of non-volatile memory, NVM. So what is non-volatile memory, you may ask? Well, non-volatile memory is a type of computer memory that retrieves stored information even after the device restarts. Uh, non-volatile memory is also referred to the storage in semiconductor memory chips. So some examples of non-volatile memory is the floppy disk, the compact disk, the internal hard drive, the external hard drive, the flash drive, and the SD card. So how did non-volatile memory began? Well, non-volatile memory began in 1959, where John and Darwin uh, created the first successful insulated gate field effect transitor, which will be displayed on the side. So it consists of a metal, which is the gate, and oxide, which is an insulator, and silicon, which is a semiconductor. And because these materials were used, the researchers named it MOSFET, or currently known as a MOS. These two researchers did not pursue MOSFET because during their time, it was unreliable and inefficient. So then how did non-volatile memory continue? So in 1961, Tom Sarah reported that a charge can be stored. And in 1966, Edgar Asac, with his other researchers, used the metal nitride oxide silicon structure to trap charged elements, which is shown on the side. And MN MNOS is actually just another MOSFET, just that its oxide layer in MOSFET gets replaced with nitri a double layer of nitride and bottom oxide. So the physics behind MNOS is actually charge trapping. It uses a variable charge between the control gate and the channel, uh, which causes a change in threshold voltage of the transistor. And as a result, electrons are trapped in the trapping layer in this case, in MNOS, it would be an insulator, which is nitride. So an evolution from MNOS comes from Dave Froman, who introduces the flowing gate avalanche injection metal oxide semiconductor, FAMOS, which is just another alternate way of storing charge. And that became the basis of erasable programmable read-only memory, EEPROM. And continuation of EEPROM is in 1980, Hughes Microelectronics introduces the electrical erasable PROM, EEPROM. And they also introduced non-volatile random access memory, NOVRAM, which just backs up a static RAM chip. So what is the difference in EEPROM and EEPROM? Well, the difference is how the contents is erased. In EEPROM, the contents are erased through UV light. Well, in EEPROM, the content is erased through a electric signal, a flash to monitor technology. So in 1980, Fyodor Moscow researching developed NOR flash. The structure is shown on the side. It was named flash because of how fast it can erase its memory. Uh, during this time, um, Moscow, in order to protect his company, uh, he developed, he promised and developed NAND flash, which is a lot smaller than NOR flash and a lot faster in erasure and writing in than NOR flash. However, it comes with the fact that it had a slower read speed. So how does the flash work? It's based off of a flowing gate mechanism, which is still charge trapping. The only difference between MNOS uh, charge trapping and discharge trapping is that the trapping layer is actually just a conductor. Uh, and as a result of the fact that it's a conductor, it wears out faster, which will be a uh, negative later on. So how do they trap electrons? Well, they trap electrons using a method called hot electron injection mechanism, 
which will be shown on the side. So what happens is that they put a high voltage between the control gate and uh, the source and drain will also uh, have a medium charge, medium voltage. And when electrons have enough energy, uh, they will melt through the near the drain side and go into the insulator and thus trapping it. So the advantages of using non-volatile memory is that it does not need a continuous supply of energy. And as a result, uh, information is not deleted after there isn't any energy source left. And because of that, uh, it has a longer retention of data. However, the disadvantages of non-volatile memory is that it costs more than volatile memory. It's a lot slower than volatile memory, in which RAM of volatile memory runs at 12,800 megabytes per second, while SSD, uh, a non-volatile memory, runs 456 megabytes per second. And lastly, as I said, it has a lim limited lifetime. So why do we still use non-volatile memory over volatile memory? Uh, as a, well, Non-volatile memory is actually just used as a second storage system, while volatile memory is used as the primary storage. This is because um, uh, volatile memory is faster and it's based off of RAM, while, uh, while uh, non-volatile memory just stores after uh, RAM goes off. So how non-volatile memory impacts our lives today? Well, it is uh, used in storage in a lot of electronics, like our phone and our computers. Um, in our phones, they uh, help us store our photos, our videos, our text messages, um, and even apps. Um, so they help us really store our memories and codes in a computer, most likely. So the expected value for a non-volatile memory market size is 94,400 million by 2026. And the current uh, market size is 67,370 million, which is in 2020. So the real question is, do you believe that uh, this market, 5.8 uh, market increase will actually happen? Oh, and that's the end of this video. Here is my bibliography of my first page and uh, second page. Thank you.